Hi everyone. What you're looking at here is a uh, silver tone, 1938. It's a uh, two-band. I've got this thing running. I'll turn it up for a second. And the tuning I got that going it didn't work before so I got that going and, uh, as you notice it's a new doll plate on there because the old one look how nasty that looks I ripped that off when I was uh, messing around and put me hardware on there and but it looks a lot better. It does the exact same thing. This one's paper. This one's plastic in the back. So this one's a lot better than the original. Problem I'm having was it, uh, I've had this. Uh, I started this about six months ago, perhaps, and I put it on the back burner because uh, I wanted to work on a grind dig. I had other projects in the house, to repairs and things. You know, every stuff coming up. So I decided to go back with it. And the reason I put it on the side burner is because my transmitter is transmitting at uh, 1100 kilocycles. But if you notice it's on, wait a minute. Oh yeah, I keep reading at the top one, 9, 10. It's on 10 instead of 11. And I put that on my, uh, I, I did a, alignment on it but it had you know it just took real easily I mean it was easy to align and uh, my amplitude was way down to maybe 50 millivolts so everything worked out great but the only problem is I can't get it right I'm broadcasting like I said at 1100 and I always check my transmitters with this digital radio uh let's see look in the corner my rifle's missing you see, must have gone says it's there. i got it take a look out in the garage exactly if i could turn it the right way the car's gone. he's got a lot of nerve taking off with the car without telling us oh well it's all right i won't be needing it today well it's a hangover he must have he's another it's shape. right on 1100 Transmitters, I checked the AM, FM, short waves on that thing, and it's always correct. So I'm getting 10 here. Now, when I do an alignment, it says I think it was. Let me go back up here just real fast on the thing here. Oh, great. Oh, it was just set at. I need to. Now my eyes is going. I need to get checked out. Let me see. Well, that's, uh, I'm not going into the uh, short wave. All right. It just wants to, it, well, let me see. Yeah. 600. Set the, uh, dial to 600, and then you go to I think it was 1500, yeah. And you gotta rock it back and forth and you make your adjustments. I mean, alignment went perfect. Sun 10, it should read 11. If I put it on 15, it's gonna be right. Then they go with a 600, no, it's wrong. Uh, I'm just having a trouble aligning. I mean, not aligning it, but then after I align it, it just don't, the dial is just not right. That is something that's not acceptable in my view. So I think I'm going to have to go on the oscillating circuit and replace a couple of them uh, mica capacitors. I didn't change them. I'll show you later. But uh, otherwise it works perfect. I did. I think I did change one of the valves, the tubes. But uh, what you're seeing here is just I took the wire off the volume to in the future put a uh, MP3 jack on the back. Well,
they had it on a and it was setting you can see that these are the ones with the wire they got a name for these i can't think of it right now but it was sitting up like this just willy nilly and the soldered on there and uh top it off it was a one amp fuse i put a five tenths of an amp which is plenty so they over it fused it poor job of mounting the capacitors so i replaced all the capacitors and and some of them are actually these dog bones are actually good but i did change quite a few of them this in here is a uh, and this little can here, if I remember right, those were, let's see if I can see them on that print real fast. I know there were uh, ceramics. There's two ceramics in there for the uh, 110 coming in. Yeah, 0.01s, 2.01 ceramics in there. So I, I, I didn't change them or ceramics, and they were, you know, no use changing those. The problem is, I think this electric uh, mic is in here, and then I check that uh, one resistor that's hid back there, a sleeper that you can't even see. I sure ain't we're taking that coil out to get in there. I'll. I'll MacGyver it somehow, but uh, and I also changed the value on this one here for the tone. I like the uh, I put my capacitor uh, substitution box in there and played around with it to see which sounded best. So I came up with a, a different value for the tone. What I thought would sound more deeper in bass. So I put this in there, I put a 5 tenths in there instead of the 1 amp. Got these here secured correctly. Changed all the capacitors and resistors that are out of tolerance. Uh, did my alignment, but it's not uh, right yet. Hi everyone. Uh, I got this uh, repaired. This uh, silver tone. 1938 radio and uh, as you remember I had a problem with the, uh, the pointer on the dial you know I had it what was it on I had it on 1100 uh, kilocycles and I was getting it on 10. Yeah, I was getting that on 10. So it would be one point. It'd be one megahertz or 1.1 megahertz. So it was off by considerably. So my, first of all, I failed to mention at the start of the video that another reason I didn't, uh, po I postponed this and didn't uh, follow up on it is because I did. Actually, I, I had uh, filmed the uh, everything in there that was original except for that, uh, you know, back when it was first made. Let's see if I can back out of there. Back when it was first made, they used this clip. And it just... Uh, Went in a little groove and you turned it and you put your little screw in there. And, and, and it had a, uh, naturally a metal can. Electrolytic that had three different values in it. Well, like I said, they tuck and they put, uh, these three in there. And even if you collapse it and get it in there, you see it just, it was just flopping around in sight there. It was just moving inside there. I didn't like the way they did that, and 
they also put a uh, 50, what was it, a uh, 20, a 20, or whatever, up in here. I forgot exactly where it was, and I took that out. Somatic didn't call for it, and I was reading 50 microfarads when I was showing. It was supposed to be reading like 22 or something like that. So, I took that out and mounted that when I... Alright, the repair on it, as far as my... Of what I suspected, it was in the oscillator section, and there was the oscillator coil for the uh, broadcast band. This resistor I took out, went in and checked it, and uh, it's uh, 5,000 ohm, and I was reading 5,700. It uh, was just under the 20%, so it was still good, but I said, hey, you know, when I, I'm in there, I'm replacing it. I knew that wasn't the issue. The problem was with this one right here, this, uh, it's a, uh, they call it a uh, point zero 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 zero. That's a uh, point uh, four, four zero five. Which is comes out to fifty picofarad. That was the problem. Uh, it was causing an issue. There is another one back there. Uh, let me think what that was. That's supposed to be a point oh oh five. It's another mica, but I can't get in there. And it's going to this uh, oscillator coil to ground. And the resistor back there, that dog bone resistor, I still can't get to that. But I can tell that it had a. Uh, a brown body, which would tell me it was a... What the heck was it? The brown body means it's uh, one, and then a black N was zero. So I know it's one zero, and I can't see the dot on it to tell me how many zeros to add. But I did put my... I was able to get in there and check the resistance. I was getting 100 ohms. Uh... I don't see that on the print as 100 ohms. I see one as 250. But I was reading 100, so I say, hey, that's correct. So, anyway, I got it fixed. I want to show you one more thing, if I can get this wrong. I got that speaker on there, but I think I could turn it around. Watch my stuff, Kenneth. I got to power off of it. God bless it. Now I got to put that back on. Yeah. It'll take a minute, but... <clears throat> Let me see if I can get that in there. I'm not sure if you can see that. Let's see if I can zoom up a little bit tighter on that. Looks like the dial ball bulb's getting in the way. Go down with it a little bit. The other down. All right. Yeah, I think you can see it. Okay. This is the grid wire off the oscillator also. And that grid wire is naturally going down. To this uh, variable tuner. Well, anyway, you can see from there, there's a little piece of wire that comes out right here from this side of the tuner. I don't know if that's the oscillator or the uh, antenna. Look, they got the same amount of fins. <coughs> well, I tell you real fast because, well, yeah, 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 it's, uh, yeah.
Yeah, that's the oscillator side of it. It's coming from there, and it's a little couple, it's a wrap and a half or something, a wire wrapped around this grid wire on the oscillator tube. It's just a piece of wire wrapped around from the oscillator tube into the oscillator uh, end of the uh, tuner. And so it's soldered to there and it's wrapped around this wire about one and a half turns. That's called a gimmick capacitor. Very common on the uh, radios back in uh, the 30s. Uh, and it has to be there. If you take it off, you're just going to find out you ain't going to get some of a gun. You're not going to get the stations pulling right, or if you can get them. All right, let me go see. Turn the variac on. I got to go into the isolation transformer. Let me uh, lock this in, this uh, power analyzer. True RMS, that's 113 there. Let's see what it says on my 116. Oh, the heater cut on. Furnace cut on. Now it cut off. Now I bet it raised. 116. Well, I can raise that up just a hair. Oh, that's going. To, that's 13. That's 114. What have I got there? 117. All right, that's good. All right, let me turn it on. If I can figure out which knob it is. It's on the tone control. I hate that. And we'll put it on low right now. What I'm going... Oh, shoot, did I get my phone here? Now, what I'm going to use for broadcasting, because it's going to be a lot faster. Let's see if I can bring it over this way. I've, I think you've seen this one before. This was made in Germany. Uh, it's an AM transmitter. I, you know, I, I got the one behind me, but I, I thought this would be faster, so I was showing the stations. And it carries all up to, uh, I think, 44.9 uh, megahertz, all the way down to uh, 1 kilohertz, I guess. So, let me turn on my DC power supply. It's a 4.9, it's a 5 volt unit. And, I, and we'll turn this on. Now we got it set at 700. It says megahertz, but it's uh, 700 kilohertz. Now, get my Bluetooth out because it is Bluetooth. Please don't miss the opportunity. Yeah. Hell, is the volume down on this thing or what? There's a little light on there, ain't lightning yet. Which maybe will when I start to. Uh, I'm gonna find out. Definitely gotta get find something. Boston Blackie. I gotta get some more. Okay, now we're on seven kilohertz, seven hundred. It's spot on. It's 
Spot on seven. Down here on the green, green scale. On the green scale, it's right on seven. So, now we're going to just say, member, I'll put it on nine. There's 900. It says, I use this a lot faster. I'm going back and waiting for the other president to calibrate. Spot on. You can see the 900 is at the 12 o'clock position. Actually, on 1,000 on here. Now we'll go to. Spot on. I will go to 10. I said 10, right? Yeah. There's 10. Right there. Those who have no friends. Nine, nine, fifty, ten. Spot on. So, what else can I try? Let's try thirteen hundred. Spot on. It's spot on. Well, that's the way I, it's spot on. That's the way I wanted it. I mean, that's the way it's supposed to be. It's supposed to track correctly. Okay? Line. I, when I changed them, I did adjust the, uh, a couple of the uh, trimmer caps on it by ear. I didn't put it on my uh, signal generator. Didn't need to. Because I had it within. I had a spot on. Okay. Sounds distorted. But that's just the way it sounds. All right, now we're going to try a short wave. The other short wave, okay. Now, let's go with a, a six. And we'll go with the eight. Take this off to zero. I think that's the way it goes. Yeah. Eight. Alright, that's eight megahertz. Go up through the volume. Eight's right here on Spot on. Uh, we go to, let's go for two. Just to give you an idea how well it's tracking. Here's 14 right there. Higher you go up on the... Oh, yeah. I didn't come up here to save your life. I came up here to capture an escape crew. 14. Too bad I had to do both at the same oh, time. Seven. Hey. 
44. So I think it goes up to 49. What did I say? Go to 7. This is called harmonics. Uh, seven and fourteen. That's harmonics. Seven. Right spot on. So what I got here is a uh, is a little preamp. that I'm going to be putting in there. Uh, but to operate that preamp, I need 5 volts. So, got a little transformer. I bought several of these. What I'm going to do is mount them inside the wooden case. This is very small. You know. And, so that will... Give me my 5 volts from uh, 120 whatever. I think I'm getting 120 volts up here right now. And that uh, meter that's over there, you can't see it. It says 124 volts. That's the voltage I get at times. And that's... Then I got this um, single pole. No, I'm sorry. Single throw double pole and what I plan on doing with this is connecting the uh, one end of the transformer this little guy to one of the poles so when I and naturally the uh, this will be connected to preamp so I'll cut the uh, this here off too so I can go on uh, MP3 or back to radio on the other pole. So when I go back off, uh, say off of aux, it's going to automatically cut the power off of that transformer so it ain't powering up this little guy, which ain't going to power up the preamp. And then when I go to, uh, you know, to radio, it's just, like I said, it's going to knock the power off to those things. Go to aux, it'll put the power back to the transformer to the preamp and that's the, my plan well let me get back with the uh, chassis in the cabinet and uh, auxiliary also installed so I'll get back with you All right, I'm going to... Is your heart filled with pain? Okay, Shall this is the AM radio. Now I'm going to put it on Ox. Isn't that good? On the contrary. What there is of it is terrific. Well, That's then you should have made the whistle shorter, like this. Back to radio. <laughs> Wonder if to a place downtown known as the Traveler's Bar. So I got that fixed. Uh, I'm using my uh, smartphone. It's a combination place, joint, and iPhone. Whatever you want to use, MP3 player, CD. Uh, the reason I'm using this instead of my MP3 player or any other is because these the things don't put out much volume. Mention that, Mary. That's exactly why I'm going but there. to meet another girl. That ain't, that ain't even up, and I don't want to wake the wife. But I don't know. You know something, Blackie? I think these put out about well, like. Maybe if you're lucky, a hundred million watts, I'm not sure. See? Because right now I think he's probably out to dinner. Just my luck. Well, at least you're feeling better. That's up. And then it's still got... I suppose. 
But hey, wait a minute. Suppose the young Hello? lady who came down here to see won't talk to her. Have you ever known a girl who wouldn't? Now back the to radio. Of the seat, no answer to that. <laughs> Whoever did this uh, work to this radio, an idiot. This veneer on the front is, I mean, the whole veneer is not too bad. But what they did, I don't know if you can see, there's a hole there where there was a finishing nail came out. Here's a finishing nail, finishing nail, finishing nail. I think there was one right here. Then you can see them on the bottom. One right there, one there, there. They put finishing nails. I don't know why. It doesn't look like it was popped up. There is a little bit of veneer missing there and a little bit on the top, but it is not... Uh, it's not... Uh, let me turn this off. It's not... Uh, worth changing the uh, veneer on. I don't want to. It's, you know, it's, this is 84 years old, this radio. So, we'll turn it around. I'll show you what I did in the back. Let me turn this power off, too. Then I'm going to show you a, kind of a block diagram of how I went about this. Hopefully you can see that. Let me get, maybe I can zoom up a little bit, I don't know. I hit the right button. <clears throat> okay. So, this is a power source. I'm not calling it a step down transformer. But it's a power source of 5 volts DC. And you can see here, I had to, the hardest part of this radio was making a, well, finding a bracket that I could brace here and there instead of just hanging around flopping. So I found this one off of an old chassis that's cut it out of there and bolted it on. Here's your aux, and then there's your radio sound radio, and then there's aux. Ox jack, plug that, unplug that. So what I did is, uh, here's the 110 coming out, and I went under the uh, hood with it. One side is coming off the on and off switch on the radio, and the other one's hooked up hot, the neutral. And I got them under the hood, like I said, and then the ground's right here. So I'm supplying it with 110 and we're getting 5 volts DC out. And it's going into the little preamp right here. And I got mine right here on this board. Then going into your switch and your uh, aux jack. So let's see the radio or aux. And this is... A double pole double throw I'll show you the uh, reason why I went with that I could tell you right now see when it's off now there even if it's plugged in when it's off there's no power going to this power source because of the switch being hooked up to the switch now also if it's in radio and it's on there's still no power to this power source. So when there's no power to that, there's no power to the uh, preamp. Now the only way it's going to get power to it is to turn it on aux and then that sends the power one leg of this uh, 110 volt it's cut on it's completing the circuit and you got your power to your power source and your preamp and so forth. But anytime it's on radio or it's off this is not uh, hot. That was the purpose of putting the uh, double pole 
double throw switch in there. It's uh, see all the wires. See, go back in there, try to tidy them up best I could. I don't know. I had a, all this room in here, and I thought, well, I'm mounting it on here. Pretty easy to access. It's pretty neat, I think. Okay. This is a more like a block diagram of what I did in the radio as far as the aux input. Now here's my uh, power source, a 5 volts DC. This is aux, aux jack, 3.5 millimeter or 1 eighth, whatever, stereo. Preamp. And this is uh, the switch, the double pull, double throw. And this is in the radio position that I'll tell you about. So right now you're getting uh, out of the power source. You have um, the neutral. It's hooked up hot at all times. The hot isn't hot. It's coming out, coming through here and here to this contact on the uh, double pull switch. And then when it's in the aux position, it comes back out and here and here and there you go. I'm sorry. Coming from the switch from the uh, radio. So even when the radio is off, there's no power to this naturally. And then you're coming in, turn it on, and, got, and if you're in the aux position, it's going to make this contact here and it's going to come up and in and then put 110 right here. So you got your neutral and 110. Then your positive and negative on your 5 volt DC is going to your preamp right here. Straight connection. Ox jack is uh, right and left. Going right in here into the input of your left, right, left, right, whatever. And then um, preamp is right there that I showed you. And then so we're in the aux position right here. So this one's going to be on this another. This is the second pole of the double throw switch. It's coming in from this uh, radio uh, volume control. We're looking at the uh, highest impedance, and that usually will have a uh, coupling capacitor in that area. You know, there could be something in before that, but. It's going to be the highest P. It's not the wiper. You don't want to put it on the wiper. And naturally, this is, you know, you could have a resistor here or whatever, but it's still, that's going to ground and be the lowest. So you're coming off here, you know, and that goes there, goes back in, and this is the output. So output's coming out, going in here, going into volume control. And the wiper is going to be, is to be on by. So that's how you get your amplification. Now you notice, I think, I don't know if I ever mentioned that, but these left, right on the aux jack are done correctly. But on the output, I put the right and left, I jumpered them so I could still get both left and right channels because it's a mono radio, but still, you know, uh, that's coming out in there, in there, in there. Okay. Now, now, if you had it in the radio position, look what happens here. You got the uh, 110. Now, if you throw it in the radio position, it's going to put this over here, and there is nothing right here. So that is cutting the, the 110 source off of the uh, power source. And then you'll see the, the two bottom ones are made. So this one will be these two. Which is going back to there, and guess what? This one here is going to where that original wire was on this volume control. It's making it again. So by doing that this way, you anytime your you know, radio is off or you've got it in the radio position, this power source or the preamp are not powered. Uh, there's no power going to it on the power source of radio power. The power source, it won't be any on the preamp. That was the purpose of putting the uh, 
double pull, double throw uh, switch in there. So, I don't know if that uh, helps you uh, if you haven't done this before. I haven't seen this on uh, YouTube as far as the way I do it, as far as cutting up this, uh, where this power source is not hot at all times, and naturally preamp a long time it is when the ox is in. If it's on the radio, it's no power, no power. It's, uh, it's the way I did it. That helps you, you know, you can put it on pause and copy this. Hope it just comes out clear, I don't know. But, uh, yeah, that's what I did on this radio, and it, you can see that it worked fine. Looks great. So, hope that helps you understand what I did. Now you see that it works both radio and the aux with the help of a preamp and a power source of 5 volts DC. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this whole uh, series on the, on the Silver Tone 1938 I think I said. Uh, 84 years old. Brought back to life. With updated with MP3. So thanks again for watching and I hope you enjoyed it and maybe uh you got something out of it.